quick lesson in soldering. When you are soldering a connection, you want to apply the heat behind the connection and your solder on the opposite side of the connection because when you, when you feed the solder into the connection that you're trying to create, the solder will flow toward the source of heat. So notice, I'm going to take my tip of my iron and I apply it underneath and I'm going to apply the solder on top and the solder will be drawn toward the tip, the source of the heat. Sometimes you can't get the work to heat up enough to melt the solder unless you first prime it by applying a little bit of solder directly to the tip just to get it to transfer its heat to the joint that you want to create. Okay, and Now I feed my solder in from this side and there's the connection. Nice and clean. One more time. This connection is a little bit more difficult to create because it is closer to the ring terminal which is trying to draw the heat away from the joint that I'm creating. Connected to the case, it's going to heat sink it. So I apply a little solder to the tip, get, the, get it to heat my work and then I bring my solder in from the opposite side and just flow it into the work and it draws right toward the tip. And there you have it. There are the two power MOSFETs connected to the output terminal. Now it's time to assemble the PC board. I'm going to show you this PC board. It's a little bit different because this is a 150 amp model. So I'm going to zoom in very close and show you what I've done to this board. You can see that I've piggybacked a second, I think it's R9 on the schematic diagram. Don't quote me on that, but I'm, I'm pretty sure. I'll have to go back and look. So there are two 100 ohm resistors coming off the output of the operational amplifier one to drive the gate of each power MOSFET because there are now two in this particular build. I will eventually create a PC foil pattern that makes provision for the second resistor but this is good enough for now. For this particular run I have not done that. I preformed the two gate leads so that they're going to line up approximately where the gates, uh, the gates of the power MOSFETs are inside the case. All right. And the first step is to assemble what we call jack nuts to the bottom of the PC boards. Jack nuts are the same nuts used on serial connectors and VGA connectors on computer laptops and in the backs of computers. You've seen these all over the place. The 4-40 thread female on one end, male on the other. So I send the jack nut from the bottom of the board up through the top. Put a number four lock washer and number four hex nut. And I'm just going to make this very light. I'm not going to tighten it very much at all because I do want it to slide around in the hole. Sometimes the hole of the PC board doesn't always line up exactly with the holes in the case and there is a little bit of slop in there so I can get it aligned perfectly before I tighten everything down. Second jack nut. Lock washer. Nut. Tighten it just a little. Now it's ready to slip into the case.
little tricky getting these wires in here. I usually um, work them in with a pair of tweezers. And they're approximately where I want them to be. Now, I can secure the other side of the jack nut to the top of the case. Take my 440 screws by one quarter inch long. Right. And a couple more lock washers. And this time a couple of flat washers for the outside of the case. And what I do to assemble it is I just take my tweezers and stack them. Lock washers first. They're so small it's, it's kind of difficult to hold on to them with your fingertips. So. I find it easier, although you'd never know it by the way I'm fumbling around with my tweezers right now. There. Now I can pick these up by hand as a grouping. Just turn the case over, find the opening and start the screw threads in. Don't always want to cooperate. Now I'm just going to tighten these down, good and snug. These also create a ground connection for the PC board to the case, so it's important to keep those snug. And my final tightening on the nut with my hex driver. This is a 3 16 inch hex driver. And the PC board is mounted. Now I'm going to pre-tin the wires that will attach to the gate terminals of the power MOSFETs. Pre-tin the gate terminals themselves. And while I'm here I'm also going to pre-tin the back side of the source terminal for the power MOSFET. With my tweezers, I'll take the wire to the source terminal of the PC board and I'm going to wrap it around the source terminal of MOSFET number one. Again, this is the MOSFET closest to the positive input terminal. And it is the only one if you're building a 75 amp version. And I'm wrapping it so that I get a good mechanical connection as well as a good solder connection. And I'm pushing it as, as low down on the terminal as I can because I'm going to be assembling the R12 piece of wire above it. So with my tweezers, I wrapped it very carefully down around the end of the source terminal. 